Our entire city has been shocked by this cowardly act of violence. As I said earlier this morning at the scene, I'm of course angry, as we all are, that someone would carry out such an attack which really amounts to an attack on our city itself. A gun violence in any part of our city is horrible and completely unacceptable. As the shots rang out last night, our police officers, our firefighters and paramedics rushed to the scene. And just as we saw earlier this year, uh, we are all once again immensely proud and grateful for the courage and for the professionalism that they showed. And I want to express our collective gratitude to all first responders who came as quickly as possible to help people uh, in the wake of this horrific incident. I'm continuing to get updates from uh, Police Chief Mark Saunders about the ongoing investigation. I could see for myself at the scene where I was joined by Councillors Fragadakis and Fletcher that every possible effort was being made by our very capable police service so as to determine as quickly as possible what happened and why. I have total confidence in the ability of our police under the Chief's leadership to determine what did in fact happen here. I want to publicly thank as well Premier Doug Ford and Federal Minister Bill Blair who were both immediately in touch to offer condolences as well as to offer any assistance that Toronto might require. In times of such horror, it is good to know that Toronto is not alone and Toronto will never be alone and more important of all, uh, most important of all, that the people of Toronto will never be alone. While our city will always be resilient in the face of such attacks, it does not mean such a terrible act committed against our residents is any less painful. This is an attack against innocent families and against our entire city. This is a tragedy, another tragedy uh, in our city this year. I promise all of the people of Toronto, but most importantly those directly affected by this tragedy, that we will all be relentless in getting answers about why this senseless attack happened. I've said for some time that the city has a gun problem, in that guns are far too readily available to far too many people. It is something I spoke about very directly at a federal government conference held late last year on acts of violence. As I've said repeatedly, this is an international problem and this is a domestic problem. There are far too many people carrying around guns in our city and our region who should not have them. You've heard me ask the question of why anybody would need to buy 10 or 20 guns, which they can lawfully do under the present laws. And that leads to another question we need to discuss. Why does anyone in this city need to have a gun at all? And I know even answering that question won't fully eliminate tragedies like this, but even if we can prevent one of these incidents, then in my view it is a discussion worth having and having very soon. To that end, I'll be reaching out to both of the federal and provincial governments as they have reached out to us uh, to urge them to sit down with us at, at as early a date as possible to discuss a range of public safety issues, including uh, guns and uh, the legality uh, of guns uh, in, in various different contexts. I think it is fitting for us to revisit this issue, yes, uh, to protect our city, but also out of respect for those who have lost their lives uh, and had their lives dramatically disrupted by this senseless violence. In the meantime, uh, I will work with you and with everybody else, all of the other governments, our police service and the community, to do whatever we can to comfort and to heal our city and to assist the police in getting the answers we all need arising out of this uh, senseless act.